We have returning contributor Paul Caldwell, chairman and CEO of Caldwell Soames. And today we are chatting with Vita Ridgway. She is focused on ODC digital initiatives inside entertainment, media and communities. She is the co-founder of University Music Entertainment, home of award-winning multi-platinum artists Drew Hill, Maya and Cisco. Vita and her partner Grammy-nominated music producer Ron Lawrence recently launched culturetech.io, a website that serves as the place where tech meets culture, an intersection of crypto, the metaverse, NFTs, blockchain, fintech, and all things Web3 for the creator economy. And today we are chatting about fintech's social impact, cryptocurrency, and tokenization. Now, digital transformation has been introducing profound improvements across various sectors, especially in the case of digital payments. However, the growth of payment technology has also created noticeable threats for sensitive customer data. And as our data passes through various points when making digital payments, it becomes vulnerable. Therefore, tokenization blockchain combination is very much on the rise as a reliable approach for isolation of data in ecosystems. This is where you pay attention. This application of tokens has increased in the payments processing industry for storing credit card information without exposing the original data, meaning keeping our personal details safer than the traditional methods used in Web 1 and Web 2. And in addition, the use of tokenization in blockchain has been making news for prospects of converting tangible and intangible assets into digital tokens. So exactly what does the new age of tokens mean for the future of blockchain? Well, Blockchain and tokenization of assets aren't for every industry. However, several sectors like cannabis, fintech, and cloud computing are really embracing these transactions that now allow for essentially better proof of ownership. Now, you might confuse tokens with cryptocurrency, but the tokens are used for investment purposes to store value or to purchase, while cryptocurrencies are digital currencies used to facilitate transactions such as making and receiving payments along the blockchain. Now, the tokens represent real-world items using blockchain technology, and they're transferable once these are in the blockchain, just like cryptocurrency. And here to break it all down and what this all means for us regular people is my expert at hand, Paul Caldwell, and his really good friend, Vita Ridgway. Welcome to the show, superstars. Hello. Hi, Zan. I'm going to start with you, Paul. So in, in recent headliners, and this tying it all together, Visa is launching a new um, consulting and advisory service to advise its clients on crypto. And Visa is going to offer advice to financial institutions and retailers and firms to basically help them better understand the crypto ecosystem. Now, while the move doesn't directly affect consumers, it is further evidence that cryptocurrency is gaining more mainstream adoption within corporate America, which generally has a positive influence on the value value of investors' crypto holdings. But of course, given the current volatility in the market, it's kind of sometimes all up in the air. What do you say to this? And should we be proceeding with caution, Paul? And I think, I think it's always wise to proceed with caution um, when something is um, unclear. And I think that's been the case with cryptocurrencies. I think people generally do not understand tokens or tokenization of assets or tokenization of cash flows and businesses and things of that nature. Um, a lot of people jumped in, a lot of companies, I should say, jumped in, and it impacts a lot of people when big companies jump in on crypto. For example, Visa has been quite good at uh, allowing for crypto Visa cards, for example. So crypto backed Visa cards. In other words, I have a cryptocurrency account, I get a Visa card, um, a tied to that account. And when I go buy something, it debits it in my crypto. It does a back end conversion, back office conversion um, to fiat or maybe not, depending upon the customer settings, the configuration settings in the system for that particular customer. But the challenge is some of the some of the back end things, some of the some of the subsequent to the transaction transactions that can occur, things like returns and RMAs, return merchandise authorizations and what happens if crypto being as volatile as it is goes down and who eats the spread risk? Um, merchant services providers like Fiserv and others are, are quite um, uh, concerned a bit about this because there's a, there's a certain degree of financial risk there. And at mass, that can be significant and substantial. So tokenization and being able to 
Um, being able to tokenize a transaction is one thing from a PCI compliance point of view. Europe has Europe has tokenized uh, transactions through um, their PCI compliance requirements, and it's a D DS3 is a law now on all systems in Europe. You have to code to DS3, which is a digital security protocol. Um, and if you don't, you can't do business uh, on an on an e-commerce website. That's for sure in Europe without it, or you're going to be in trouble. Um, as far as uh, tokenization of assets, NFTs, I think all of that is here to stay. But again. It's going to be, uh, it's going to still evolve. It's not where it's going to be. I think we're back with crypto and NFTs and metaverse and megaverse and multiverse and all of that. I think we're back to where we were with Netscape Navigator many years ago. It owned the space. It was it was the one that was trending. And then Google came along and um, knocked everybody off of the search um, stool with, uh, with a better way, uh, uh, transformed how people thought about search. And I don't that transformative um, solution hasn't shown up big in the marketplace yet, but it will. But it will. And, you know, when you have Visa and even OG Pay, they're moving in the right direction. Uh, and there's beauty and power in simple concepts like replacing sensitive data with tokens to make digital payments more secure. Um, but scratch beneath the service and powerful technologies, um, you know, scratch beneath that service, they do enable tokens to do so much more than reduce payment fraud. So we are headed in the right direction. So much more, though, to uh, to be researched and to structure. Vita, I'm going to turn this to you uh, with your experience in the music industry. This is a very fitting question. Question, uh, top popular trending question actually about smart contracts and a smart contract really is a program that runs on the blockchain its code and data reside at a specific address on that blockchain and nfts are powered by smart contracts which handle the transferability and verify the ownership and this is one of the most attractive features of the technology and getting paid as a creative is not always a straightforward process all too often up-and-coming musicians are stiffed on their royalties and smart contracts are now mitigating those problems, ensuring that creators aren't cheated. Now, there's a, the, the original ERC-721 standard that led to the booming market of NFTs is now being revised to allow for really a more dynamic standard for paying out royalties, no matter the platform that mints the NFTs. Talk to me about the importance of advancement and how it's going to affect recording artists' bottom line. And can they use the OG Pay wallet to liquefy their monetizations into fiat currency? Um, absolutely. Yeah. So um, with regard to the music industry, um, NFTs, um, it's proving to be pretty disruptive. Um, as you may know uh, or have heard, of, uh, Snoop Dogg um, recently purchased um, Death Row Records and the catalog that goes along with it. And what he is doing with that is re-releasing -re and also releasing new music all as NFTs, um, which is really helping with um, adoption um, overall. And what this does is it allows for uh, the intermediaries to be eliminated for the most part and go direct to, um, well, we don't even say consumer anymore in this community, we say community. So it allows them to go direct to the community and build a community um, without having to have uh, middlemen like you know record companies involved. And because of, uh, like you said, on the blockchain, everything is recorded on the ledger, there is providence, which means that you can know exactly where uh, it originated and then follow it all the way through the process, which also eliminates, like you said, um, the problem that has uh, arisen or that is prominent uh, with regard to royalties and collecting royalties uh, for artists. So uh, yes, much promise uh, in the NFT category for uh, musicians and artists. And it's beautiful because OG Pay can help them liquefy all that because for decades, musicians have not been equitably compensated for their music. And this has been particularly apparent in the music industry as reported by Fortune. The typical total revenue split is 50-50 with only 50% of revenue going to the entertainer and the rest shared among agents, lawyers, and distributors. And the reality is even grimmer when it comes to musicians who distribute their content via streaming services. Most of Spotify's top 0.8% of artists earn less than $50,000 
dollars in streaming revenue. So this is definitely paving the way. Um, Paul, I'm going to uh, turn this back to you because we're going to talk about the case use for blockchain tech in banking. Now, access to banking is an immense problem for several e-commerce companies. Regulations, uh, regulation really and monopolies can prevent easy access to finance for small startups. And blockchain technology is helping solve the sector's problems by allowing them to bypass traditional banking and speed up transactions without compromising security. OG Pay is one of those platforms. Walk us through the different differences of the traditional payment platforms versus the hybrid ones that also incorporate blockchain technology? Sure, Zen, no, no worries. I, th I think I want to mention something about smart contracts. In our firm, we believe um, that smart contracts is, is, um, is, is the next um, stomping grounds of, of innovation and transformation. Um, disruption, yes, Snoop Dogg does what Snoop Dogg does. That's a, that's a simple concept that could, could create tremendous value. And it's the simplicity in that kind of concept that uses existing technology to make a big deal. You know, there's something called the Music Modernization Act. And the Music Modernization Act is being used by artists to reclaim the royalties. Once those royalties are reclaimed, then they can tokenize those royalty, the, those, the, that content into a new context because they own their publishing, for example. Uh, they they get it back from Warner Chapel, this kind of a thing. So that's that's a big that's a big thing happening in a simple way right now. But I think that's a big thing. Smart contracts aren't always as smart as they ought to be either. So the technologies that are going into developing new types of smart contract algorithms are uh, it, uh, is significant, and they will be substantial. The um, OG Pay, for example, is is innovative. It's disruptive, but it's also transformative main thing transformative because it transforms how people think about something as simple as how they use their money just like uber transforms something as simple as how people think about how they take a ride and when you think about that and you start talking about making payments at a commercial level um without all of the interference of the the rails so to speak um, they become unnecessary because if a company if a business has a commercial wallet a consumer merchant uh, a consumer with a with a wallet can do a consumer to merchant transaction wallet to wallet without having to create heavy fees for the merchants without that merchant having to pay 2.99 percent for example so someone uses their visa card they don't have to use their visa card but so if you start at the wallet and work your way back to be able to accept credit cards as well one can imagine widgets being created on things like shopify where someone that creates a new store, a brand new store, could actually click that widget and add that payment functionality to their Shopify account. And that account would accept digital assets, cryptocurrencies, um, fiat currencies, and uh, wallet to wallet transactions, as well as credit cards, all in one um, widget. So these are these are the this, these are the directions. This is the direction of very proposed is, is in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah, kind of revolutionary. Okay, we have about a minute left, and I would like Vita to answer this question. So Vita, through community and strategic partnerships like OG Pay, um, partnerships can help reach the underserved. In fact, to reach people who aren't part of financial institutions, it actually takes a village. So we have to think about where the consumer has trust, and it may be the corner store down the street that they're using to access financial services, even if it's predatory. But with the tech we have now, like OG Pay, we can bring services to where the trust uh, secured is is where the trust is secured in a responsible manner. So let's chat. Um, OG Pay is money management transformed. Why does this matter to the community? You have about a minute. Okay. Well, it matters to the community because OG Pay is not only talking the talk, but they're walking the walk, meaning putting boots on grounds, going into the community with a grassroots, get your hands dirty type of approach that really um, can impact a community in a meaningful way, helping them to gain access to financial tools um, that can better their lives for the long term and, and, and also, you know, access to information and financial literacy, um, not only just with offering a service, but also providing a service. There you go. Well said. And that sums up another segment. We are out of time. Paul, thank you so much for coming on. It was such a pleasure having you on. Vita, what an incredible um, ability to just speak to you and get your perspective on the music industry and really where OGPay is going. Thank you for coming on. Thank you. Thanks, sir. 
Absolutely. Guys, you definitely have to check out Vita Ridgeway. Check out culturetech.io and make sure that you're checking out ogpay.com. That was our innovation and tech segment brought to you by Caldwell Soames with chairman and CEO Paul Caldwell. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York. We'll be right back after this.